Welcome back to the War Group of Woe. In this today's video, we're doing an arbitrary tier list on how good each of the start collecting boxes are. And I've already done a list on the breakdowns of the box in terms of their content, their price point, as well as their overall value and discount. This video is going to be different in that I will be ranking them on how useful the units found inside the box are and how good this box is for starting or adding to an additional army. Now, as with all tier lists, this is an arbitrary list and there isn't a bad box per se. Each of these boxes are going to be a great place to start, but some are slightly better than others. So if you have any disagreements with this list, please let me know in the comments down below. Without further ado, let's get started. First up in tier four, which I've categorized as the rough synergy or a little bit weak in terms of the units you get in the box, we have the Gloom Spike Gets. Gloom Spike Gets is a little bit of an odd one because their army and their kind of squads, so to speak, like to stick together. And so having Trogoths and Squigs be in the same box is a little bit odd um, in that you, whenever you're creating your army, you can really focus on the squigs, but your Trogoths are going to be a little bit kind of sidelined. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing if you want to go for a squig Trogoth hybrid army, but overall, I think the Gloom Spike Get box is a little bit weak. Then we have the Soulblight Gravelords box. Now, this box is weak because of the unit types you get in the box. Graveguard are an awesome unit and they are very, very powerful, but they're not going to make up the bulk of your army. The bulk of your army is going to be zombies or death rattle skeletons, and then the black knights that it also includes aren't the best. I haven't seen them used in a lot of lists very often. Most people tend to prefer blood knights. And so unless you want to do some converting work or change some things up, the blood knights are a little bit lost, I think. Uh, the white king on steed is neat and you can definitely get some good value out of him. But overall, a weaker box in my opinion. Then we have Vanguard Box Nurgle. Now this one might be a little bit of a controversial take, but I think the Nurgle Box is trying too hard to do everything that Nurgle has access to. Nurgle, their units are very expensive, and so you really don't have a lot of wiggle room to flex in a lot of different directions. Nurgle works best when you kind of focus really heavily on mortals or demons. And so kind of having a split makes it a little bit harder to um, properly play or list build for the army. But if you are just starting out and you just like collecting Nurgle, it's a good box. Um, but I think if it was a little bit more focused, it might be a better one. Then we have the Fire Slayers Vanguard. With this one, I hope you like Volkai Berserkers because that's about 80% of the box. Um, Volkai Berserkers aren't necessarily the best. They're better than they have been, but they're just kind of eh. <laughs> There's not a better way to put it than they're a little bit boring and a little underwhelming. That's just another thing about this box is compared to the old Fire Slayers uh, start collecting box, this one's just kind of boring. You don't get a Magma Droth, you just get a bunch of dudes. It's just kind of, my personal opinion, I think the old box was better. Last in tier four, we have the Beasts of Chaos. Beasts of Chaos are a little bit weird in how they play, and so having this box is somewhat difficult. The big thing about this box is the gores. You get them so you can sacrifice them to get more summoning points. The big beastie for a Cygore or more likely a um, Gorgon is good. That's a great aspect of the box. But uh, gores, our best of gores, are not very good. And so kind of getting a lot of them is a little bit on the meh side of things. And you can only do so much with uh, Great, great Bray Shaman. So I think this one is at the high middle of tier four. First up in tier three, I've titled the awkward unit choice or the one and done boxes. We have Greywater Fastness. 
Gray Water Fastness is the dwarf aspect of Cities of Sigmar, and their start collecting box is fine, but it's just a little bit odd. Um, the big thing here is the heroes might be a little bit difficult to double up on. Getting the solid core of foot soldiers is good, but I haven't seen very many gyrocopters or gyro bombers in many Greywater Fastness lists, but I think that this box is a little bit difficult to pick up multiple of, but I still think it's an okay box, pretty middle of the road. Next we have Demons of Corn. This box is a good example of awkward unit choice, but it's good for starting and getting two boxes and then you're pretty much good to go. Um, having two boxes is, I would say, the limit for this one. You get a good squad of foot soldiers, then some blood crushers, and then some various units you can build from the Herald Sprue as well as the Blood Throne slash Blood Cannon, I believe that's what they're called. It's basically the giant hero thing in the back of the picture on the box. Yeah, so pretty average box. Then we have Stormcast Eternals, which the only reason that this box is here is because it gives you super weird amounts of units. There's a few things in here like the Retributors that you can't field a legal squad just with one box. You get three of them in this box and the minimum squad size is five. And I believe that is the same with the prosecutors, but that one might be minimum squad of three. I'd have to remind myself on the war scroll. Uh, but outside of that, this is a really good value box. I think getting two of them would get you set up if you liked the units in, in the box. Uh, you just get a ton of points for a good value. So there's that. Then we have a Seraphon. Now this is a little bit of a weird one because if you're just taking the Seraphon box at face value, I think it might be in tier four um, just because the units you get here are a little bit eh. Um, Saurus Warriors and Saurus Knights are fine, but they're not really the premier thing when it comes to Seraphon. The Carnosaur is cool, it's great. Having multiple of those or one of those is good. Um, but the reason that I am kind of setting this preface is you can do a whole bunch of conversion work and um, kit bashing to extend the contents of this Seraphon box to the moon. Uh, there's a wonderful article, I believe it's still up on uh, Lustria Online on how to get the most out of your Seraphon start collecting box. And if you if you plan on picking this box up, I 100% recommend giving that um, a checkout because you can basically double the contents of your box for one. So that's the only reason that I'm putting it here is if you really want to get the most out of this box, you got to do a little bit more work than uh, what's required of a lot of the other ones. Then we have the Daughters of Cain Vanguard box. This one, I think I would put at the very, very top of three or the bottom of two. This box is uh, not released yet. It's coming out soon, but I still wanted to cover it just because it's my video. I can do what I want. Um, my problems with this box are the um, the cavalry that you see in the back. They're not very good, and so getting multiple of them might be a little bit weird, or fitting them into a list might be eh. But the snakes, the snake leader, and then the witch elves, mm, good box. Uh, I think not having an access point for the Cauldron of Blood sucks. That's a really, really powerful unit and almost an auto-include in most lists, as well as having various different builds by putting either the uh, Hag Queen, Slaughter Queen, or uh, Medusa on the Cauldron of Blood. That was a, it's a, going to be missed in the new Vanguard box as opposed to the old Stark Collecting box, but the old one didn't have any witch elves. It only had snakes, pretty much. So it's a give and a take. I think that this box is just on the cusp of two, though. So 
there's that. Now we get into tier two. This is useful units or good for multiple purchases. Uh, starting out, we have Anvil Guard. This is the dark elf or kind of pirates aspect of Cities of Sigmar. Um, their start collecting box is really good if you like the that side of Cities of Sigmar because you get a lot of different build options. Uh, the chariot or the scourge runner chariot, you can make a few other choices. The uh, charybdis can be made into a war hydra. So getting multiple of these is great to get those uh, slightly larger medium pieces for a good discount, as well as getting some good battle line for the uh, Corsairs and the Fleet Master. If you want to run a more pirate themed Dark Elf Cities of Sigmar list, you're still going to want to pick up some Bleak Swords and some of the other uh, staples of Anvil Guard, but I think this is a good starting point. The Seraphon Skink Box. This box is great because of the Bastilladon, the Star Priest, and all of the other bits on top of it. The Bastilladon is a great value unit that many lists bring at least one of. Uh, the Pterodon Riders are a little bit on the weaker side of things, but you can make them work if you like the unit. Uh, and then Skinks. Skinks were, and I believe still are, the bread and butter of a lot of Seraphon lists. And so getting access to Skinks as well as the Star Priest, which is a really good hero, makes this box very valuable. Uh, definitely recommend pickup if you want to run a more skink heavy Seraphine list. Next up is Slay to Darkness. Now, I think this box is a good value because the variety of units you get in this box work well with how Slaves of Darkness like to function, and picking up a few of these is a good base to build your collection off of. You could do a lot of conversion work with the Chaos Lord on Krakadrak, or play around with the bits that you get in that, and so you don't get too much overlap, which is good. Last in tier two is the Caradron Overlords box. This box is fantastic because it kind of provides you all of what you need for a basic Caradron Overlords collection. You get a good boat, you get Andron Riggers, you get some foot soldiers, and some hero, or a hero, excuse me. Uh, the hero is a good starting point if you wanted to kit bash and customize to make some of the other foot heroes for Caradron, like the chemist, the navigator, the admiral, all those. And yeah, it's just a fantastic all around box for good value and filling out a list as well as your collection. Before we move on, I would like to give thanks to our Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing. I'm kind of going through a little bit of a transitional period in my life right now, and so your support is so helpful. I really appreciate it. And an extra special thanks to Nick Hoff. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, please consider joining with the link in the description, or there is also a link to the Discord, so if you'd like to join that, that'll be in the description as well. Next up is the tier one boxes. These are boxes that I think are just a flat out, you should get this if you're planning to start out as it is the perfect unit selection or a good units for an arc core of the army. And I'll be kind of talking about what, I, what aspects of these boxes fill those out. To start, we have Sylvaneth. Sylvaneth I think have one of the best boxes because it gives you what you need for the core of your army. The Tree Lord kit is extremely flexible. You have three things you can build from it. So technically you could build, you could buy three of these boxes and still not have too much overlap. The Dryads, because they are kind of a port over from Warhammer Fantasy, you get in a little bit of a weird number. So it's actually better to buy two boxes than just one because you end up getting 32 Dryads. So you can run three squads of 10, a squad of 20, and then a squad of 10. It gives you so many tools, especially for extra Dryads that you can summon through a Branch Wraith. Uh, the only kind of mediocre one here is the Branch Witch. I've never found much use for her, but convert it into a Branch Wraith and you're golden. This is a super good box that I highly recommend picking up a few of. Next up is the Beast Claw Raiders. This one I don't think surprises many people, but this is a fantastic box. 
you can make a Beast Claw Raiders army buying exclusively this box. This is such good value and it fills out most of what you want for your army. It gives you the big beastie of your uh, Frosthorn or Thunder Tusk, as well as some Mournfang Cavalry. Super, super good. There's not much else to say other than it's a good box. Then we have Demons, Demonettes of Slanesh. This box is great because of its sheer variety of the chariot. Slanesh has so, so, so many chariot varieties that you get a ton of value from multiple purchases or just from the chariot itself. You can field a multitude of units from that chariot alone. Plus, getting more chaff of your demonettes as well as seekers is a great place to start if you want to focus on the demon aspect of Slanesh. Fantastic box, moving on. Now we're talking about the latest reveal, the Skaven Vanguard box. This box is what I have always dreamed a Skaven start collecting box should be. You get a bunch of clan rats, you get a Grace here, Storm Beans, and a Warp Lightning Cannon that can also be made into the Play Claw Catapult. This is what the Skaven box should have been. If you don't remember, the old Skaven start collecting box was themed around Clan Pestilence, and it was fine if you like Pestilence but it had only pestilence themed units. Uh, this box is slightly more general with an emphasis towards Scryer, but I think that's okay because in, in my opinion, Scryer is one of the cooler aspects of Skaven and a, one of the more popular ones, as well as some of the more useful ones. So Skaven Vanguard box looks really, really appealing right now. Then we have the Iron Jaws box. I think the Iron Jaws box might be the one of the best, if not the best, start collecting box. You will use every single unit in this box, and if you get multiple of them, up to like three, you're still going to use most, if not all of them. Except maybe the third War Chanter, but you can convert that. Um, you get boys, you get Gorgruntas, and you get War Chanters. Awesome. That's all you need for a start at the Iron Jaws. Not much else to say. Now we have Flesh Eater Quartz. I am putting Flesh Eater Quartz here almost exclusively for the variety of kits you can get from this. You get the awesome Terrorgeist slash Zombie Dragon combo. You get the Arch Regent that's on top of him that can be on foot or in some other combination of the two. You get some ghouls and then you get some beefier uh, Crypt Horrors or Crypt Flares. I believe it comes with both because they're the same kit. Um, amazing box. The only downside to this box is it goes a little bit light on the Crypt Ghouls as uh, Flesh Eater Quartz has a tendency to go through a lot of them. And so that might be the only downside of this box, but I think the versatility makes up for that. Now we have the latest Ideneth Deepkin Vanguard box. I really like this box because it provides you with a bunch of everything. You get eels, you get a shark, you get some Namarti, and then you get a hero. The hero you can convert or proxy as one of the other ones, like a Tidecaster or something else if you so desire. So getting multiple of them is a good idea. And it just kind of lets you flex into what other aspect of Deepkin you want. And that's a good thing because Deepkin can play in a lot of different ways, either eel spam, sharks, Namardi, or some other variant in between. So, good box. Then we have the Corn Mortals box. This box is fantastic because of the value in the box, as well as the unique heroes in the box. And just a bunch, it's just an all around good box. Corn really needs the blood secretor that you can only get from this box, and everything else is really good. You're always going to want some of these units in your lists. So if you want to focus on being a corn mortal, this box is great. Then finally, we have the Night Hot Vanguard box. This box is super good. It gives you a ton of chain rasps, it gives you some good heroes, it gives you spirit hosts, it gives you Grimgast Reapers. Oof, this box is so good, which is a fantastic thing for night hunt because for the longest time they didn't really have a start clinging box their stuff was just kind of 
split among all kinds of different weird boxes and don't even get me started on soul wars or the derivatives of it so i'm very glad that they finally have a good box set and that was a quick look at what i think are some of the better uh, boxes in terms of the units you get and how well they are for starting an army if you enjoyed the video please leave a like or a comment and if you want to see more of this type of content in the future, consider subscribing. This has been the work of Overwell, and I'll talk to you guys next time.